Last time on Programming for Artists, we looked at conditional statements. This time I'm going to use our barbecue analogy again, and I'm going to look at how we can count things. Last time on Programming for Artists, we looked at conditional statements. If it's raining, then take an umbrella. Conditional statement. And we looked at how that linked into the variables that we were using and the vectors or the lists of things and how we could start making complicated statements and structures. This time I'm going to use our barbecue analogy again where we've been taking cups and plates and glasses. And I'm going to look at how we can count things. So we saw in previous examples how we could make vectors and lists and integers and we could use conditional statements. If something or other is true, then do something else, do something else. This time I'm going to look at how we can count through and make loops that do things a certain number of times. And what I want to have a look at is to say for all the people coming to our barbecue they will need a plate, a glass, and a fork. We'll keep it simple for now. So I could make the computer do a thing, say, uh, give a plate, give a fork, uh, give a glass, and give a fork to each person. And I could have a list of the number of people, uh, an integer. coming and I've set that to be 10. So I want to 10 times give somebody a plate, give them a glass and give them a fork. What I could do is I could say let's count through up to a number of people. So we need to count 10 times going through a loop, giving them a plate, giving them a glass giving them a fork. So I'm going to use a for loop. And the way that it works is I say for a bunch of stuff, do my list, and then stop doing my list. And again, just like the conditional statement, we're between a pair of curly brackets. I've drawn this one a bit weird. It's actually a bit more like this. And between the opening bracket and the closing bracket, we do these things this number of times. And we count up. What happens is I take a container and I'm doing the equivalent of putting marbles into it. I'm going to say uh, the first time we do something, put a, a number in there. And then the next time, and then the next time, and the next time, and the next time. And actually, what we do is we make an integer. We start with a number tell it when we want to stop, and then we tell it how we want to increment the number in that variable. And normally we'd step through one at a time. So the simplest example is to say, I'm going to make an integer called i, and I'm going to start at 0. And then I'm going to stop when... Uh, uh, I'm going to keep looping while i is less than... my number of people, and then every time we go through this loop, I'm going to say add one to i. And the shorthand way to do that is to say plus plus. This is getting ridiculously messy. So the way that we run loops is we start with uh, our initial position, we say keep running until this end condition is satisfied and then every time we do a loop increment our counter by something. In this instance we're saying start with i, make it zero, keep going until while zero is less than the number of people and then add one each time. So this will loop 
with I is 0, I is 1, I is 2, I is 3, I is 4, I is 5, 6, 7, 8. Every time testing, is I still less than the number of people? 9, 10, stop. So we can make loops using a for loop. There's a couple of others that do while and so on, which I'll do in a, cover in a separate video. But the most common one that you'll probably use is a for loop that allows you to count from somewhere to somewhere a number of times. There's a bunch of different variations that we can use, but it's basically in this format. For loop. Make a new integer, call it i, start it with an initialization. In this case, we're going to start at 0, but we could actually start at 10 and count from 10 upwards. And then I use a semicolon to say that's our starting point. While a condition is true, keep doing the loop. So I'm going to say while i is less than the number of people coming to our barbecue. Keep doing that. And every time we do the loop, I've got an additional thing that I can say, do you want to have another operation? In this case, yeah, I do. I want to keep counting and make i go up by one. So I'm going to say i plus plus, which is the same as i equals i plus one. And this bit is my statement, pretty similar to what we saw in our conditional statement. If such and such a thing is true, then keep doing a bunch of conditions, or a, a bunch of statements. And then I have my curly bracket starts, curly bracket ends, and in here is the thing that I'm going to keep looping. So in our instance, we want to say give plate, give glass, give fork. In fact, you could say, look how many forks I do have to give. So we loop through this number of people. And what's cool about this, just like our calculation to say, find out how many people there are, find out the weight of my glasses and my plates, and if that's more than a certain amount, take a truck rather than a bicycle. That calculation stays the same. Based upon what's in our variable, number of people. So all I need to do to run this in a different amount is put a different number in this variable at the beginning of my program, and it becomes flexible and reusable. Because for every person, whether we've got one person or we've got 50 people, we need to give each one a plate, a glass, and a fork. And all we do is we look up what's in this box, number of people. And this stuff stays the same. So we have a reusable component that's flexible to run again and again and again. That's very, very cool. And there's one more thing that we can do. Hey, found it. Okay. So in the last video, we looked at doing this, how we could make a vector, a list of names. In this instance, we made a list of names. We had a vector that had strings inside it called names, and we used pushback to say, get a new name, stick it on the end of this list. Get another name, stick it on the end of this list. Stacking up variables. And we found that we could find out what was in each of those individual names in the list by asking the vector called names, what's in position two, position three, position four, etc. There's a quick weird thing. Position zero is the first position. Pretty much everything inside a computer starts at zero. So position two is actually the third item. Position zero is the first item. But what I could do, knowing this, if I've made my list names, I could say, give a plate, give a glass, give a fork, and then say, hello. And now I need to know the name of the person I'm saying hello to. So I could say, find out what on earth I put in this vector list because that's got everyone's names in. So if I'm giving something to person zero, say hello to whatever name I put into 
names. Not a position zero, but a position i. So each time I run this, I say, look at the names vector, look at position i, zero, one, two, three, four, etc. Pull out the name and say hello to them. So I'd say names i. So when we run this, we look in the integer variable number of people, and that's how many times we loop. Starting with an integer i being zero, and each time we count it up by adding one to it. So we run it, and we say i is zero, give a plate, give a glass, give a fork, say hello to whatever name is in our vector at position zero. The next time we run it, we add one to i. So i starts out being zero, but now it's one. So we go through, we give a glass, fork, plate, and then we say, say hello to, look in the vector, this list names, at position, what is i? i is now one, position one, and then position two, position three, and it retrieves Jane, Jeff, etc. from our names. So we've now got variables, vectors to put lists of variables together, conditional statements to say if this is happening then do that and loops where we can go through these variables and assemble really complicated things. And what is ultra ultra cool is that's it. That's it and that is just super fabby wonderful because that's kind of basically all programming is really slowly specifying exactly what we mean making it flexible and thinking about the structures of the problem that we want because we don't care about the programming we don't care about where the commas and the brackets and everything go all we want to do is go to the barbecue and not turn up if there's nobody else there that's the cool thing that we need to remember and then we can start to think what are the needs of the people in there what are the parameters around the things that we're going to have to take how we're going to transport it those problems and then we start translating them into these simple algorithms these simple structures so if you've liked this video subscribe like leave comments in the next series of videos we're going to start using c plus plus for real i'm going to do some typing we're going to translate these things that we've learned about variables about vectors about conditional statements about loops put them all together and start building some programs. It's going to be pretty, kind of short, and then we're going to lead into doing really cool stuff, making mad things with sound, with video. Uh, so join us on the next video on Programming for Artists.